Hallelujah. Happy Sunday, everyone. Can we rise to our feet this morning as we praise God, return all our worship to Him? Today is the last day of Yasm Week. I don't know about you, but I've been so blessed. If you have also been blessed, shout hallelujah. Amen. Are we ready to praise the Lord this morning? You guys don't sound very excited. Are we ready to praise the Lord this morning? Amen. Man being Christ is a new creation. All things are past, behold, all things are new. Who the sun sets free is truly free indeed. What I'm going through is working out for me. We say the devil thought he thought that my life was, he thought by now I, he thought I had no, but that's when someone. If a man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are past, behold, all things are new. When the sun sets free, it's truly free indeed. What I'm going through is working out for me. Sing, I will be, I will be the head and not the tail. See 
the Lord a dance offering this morning. He's gonna fulfill 
of worship let's just continue to thank him continue to praise him just like we proclaimed in this song we are going to praise him until eternity as long as we live as long as there is breath in my lungs I will praise Jesus I will praise Jesus father you are highly exalted thank you Jesus my father I see what you are doing, glory to your name, hallelujah, amen. My Jesus, I see what you are doing, glory to your name.
have those beautiful names. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Ancient of Days. He is the I Am that I Am. He is the one who is. He is the one who was. He is the one who is to come. Let's open our mouth this morning and glorify this wonderful God. Let's open our mouth this morning and adore this wonderful God. He's the reason why we're here this morning. Let's thank him. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Oh, Lord, we give you glory. Oh, Lord, we give you honor. Oh, Lord, we say may your name be highly exalted. Oh, Lord, we say may your name be highly lifted up. I pour up every other name this morning. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you, oh God. 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 For everything you do for us, we thank you. For the things you have done, we thank you. For the things you are about to do, we thank you. We give you glory this every morning, God. We give you glory, we give you honor. We say, hallowed be to your name, oh God. Hallowed be to your name, oh God. Hallowed be to your name, oh God. For in Jesus' name, we have given thanks. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Amen. This morning, we're going to be praying. And for our first prayer, we're going to be reading from the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, from the King James Version. Matthew 5, 16, which says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I read it again. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This Bible verse pretty much it emphasizes on the importance of letting your light shine. As youths in the house, as Christians in the house, are you showing, are you showing what is meant to be portrayed as a Christian? Your lifestyle, what you want others to see. Do you want people to look at your life and see that, ah, they are singing in church, but they are outside. They are caught outside. This Bible verse emphasizes that it's encouraging Christians to live in a way that reflects the character of Jesus Christ, a Christ-like lifestyle. And we're going to be praying this morning, saying, Father, say, Father, give our youth the grace to be Christian, the grace to be Christian in character. Let our lives testify of Jesus at all times and draw men unto him. Let's open our mouth and begin to pray. Father, Lord, we commit our youths in the house. We commit Christians in the house. Oh, Lord, Father, we ask this morning that let our lifestyle testify of you, oh God. Let our lifestyle testify of you, oh God. Let our lifestyle draw so many men unto you, oh God. Let our lifestyle draw men unto you, oh God. We cry this morning unto you, oh Father. Let our lifestyle portray the lifestyle of Christ, the Christ's life, lifestyle, oh God. We pray that we, we will show people the way. We will draw men unto you. We're not going to chase people away from you, O oh God, but we want to draw men unto you. We want to draw men unto you, O oh Lord, Father. Give us the grace. Give us the grace. Let our lifestyle be pure, O oh Lord, Father. Give us a grace to have a Christ-like lifestyle, O oh God, so we can draw men unto you. So we can draw men unto you. O oh Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. For our second prayer this morning, we'll be reading from the book of John chapter 14, verse 30, which says, Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of the world cometh and hath nothing in me. Jesus is speaking here about the approaching presence of the prince of the world, which is referred to as Satan. And this verse is pretty much highlights that the importance of living a free life, if living a life without evil, because if we, if we live a life without evil, then we can live the life that God wants us to live. We can be in part with the will that he has for us. But if we're one leg in today, one leg out today, it's very quick. We can fall into temptations. We can, the devil can take over our lives quickly. But this morning, we're going to pray. We're going to say, Father, without every item in our lives, 
with our every items in the lives of our youth that is of the devil and let every single aspect of our lives bring glory to you let's begin to open our mouths and pray father this morning we cry to you that every aspect of our lives that's of the devil oh lord father we ask that you win it out you take it out you take it out in the mighty name of jesus every aspect of our lives oh god that's portraying the aspects of the devil oh lord we cry to you this morning that you take it out you take it out you take it out in the mighty name of jesus and let every single aspect of our life oh god bring glory to you bring glory to your name let every aspect of our life oh god adore you let every aspect of our life oh god bring glory to you bring glory to your name let every aspect of our life oh god draw men unto you thank you father for in jesus mighty name we have prayed and for our last prayer this morning, we'll be reading from the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 27, which says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which in Christ in you the hope of glory. Pretty much this verse reveals the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ living with believers and it's pretty much bringing hope for internal glory it speaks about the transformative power of christ in believers and the hope that it brings to each and every every believer in the house the hope that it brings to each and every one of us who embrace him you can't say you can't be for god and be for like i said you can't be one leg in and one leg out you have to stand for God you have to be for God so this morning we are going to pray and say father say father please convey the hearts of our youth convey the hearts of our young people all over the world and let them come to the saving knowledge of Christ let's begin to open our mouth and pray Oh Lord, Father, we cry this morning. We ask for your mercy. For those who don't know of you, oh God, Father, we cry that let your mercy prevail, oh God. Let your mercy speak for them, oh God. Please, Father, convince every heart of every youth, every young one, in the mighty name of Jesus. Convince their heart, oh God, to the young ones that they don't know of you, that don't know of Christ, oh God. Father, we ask that you come to this, you bring them, let them know about the saving knowledge of you, oh God. You, you begin to save them, oh God. You begin to touch their hearts. You begin to bring them closer to you, oh God. We pray that you convey their hearts. That transformative power that you have, oh God. We ask that you use that power and go through them. Every young one that don't know of you. Every young one that's finding difficult, that's in and out, oh God. Father, we ask that you draw them to you, oh God. Father, let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy speak for them. You draw them to you, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your transformative power, O oh God, prevail. Let that transformative power prevail, O oh God. Let that transformative power prevail, O oh God. Let that transformative power prevail, O oh God. And save every young ones that are decisive of who they are, of what they want, of how they don't know what to do, O oh God. Let that power come. Let that power come. And let it overtake them. Let, it, let that grace be for them. Let that your, your blessing, your, your favor overshadow them, cover them. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, Heavenly Father, this morning, we thank you. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration for another wonderful year as a week. We say, may your name be highly exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, we have prayed this morning, and we say that, Lord, let your will be done in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for every youth in the house, our friends, our families that are still indecisive of what they want. Like, are they in for you? Are they not? Lord, we pray that let your mercy prevail for them in the mighty name of Jesus. You draw them unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for ourselves. Let our lifestyle let our actions, our words, what we say, what we watch, what we tell others, 
let our lifestyle draw men unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, in any way that we have, our lifestyle have been drawing men away from you, oh Lord, we ask that your mercy speak for us in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of today's service, your name shall be glorified in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's be seated. This morning we'll be ministering a song titled, I'll Waste My Life. The song just reflects sacrificing everything because of our love for Christ and letting him know we are committed and devoted to him. Be blessed as you listen. If you feel led, you can worship with us. Thank you.
Jesus on you, Jesus on you. There is profit in me wasted, Lord. Jesus on you, only you, only you. Oh, what a good way to be wasted, Lord. Jesus on you, on you. offering before you let our lives be wasted on you we saw our lives in the field of Jesus because sowing our lives in the field of Jesus is not a waste the field of Jesus is good ground let our lives be a continuous pouring out of ourselves to you Lord help us to present ourselves as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto the Lord which is our reasonable service as conviction is building up in our hearts, Lord, let it be accompanied by transformation from glory to glory to be more like you. And as we hear your word this morning, Lord, come and teach us. And let your word be sown on the fertile ground of our hearts. And let our lives bring glory to your name. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. We worship and exalt you, O God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. How many people were blessed by that ministration? We have a wonderful Yazem choir. The Lord will continue to bless you and the band, the Lord will increase you on all sides. 
in the name of Jesus. So this is the grand finale of Yazim Week. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, for those of you that are watching us online, this is RCCG, Throne of Grace. And this is a place where the grace of God is at work in our lives. And this week we have been having the Young Adults and Singles Ministry Week. And it has been a wonderful time in the presence of God. Yesterday was wonderful. All throughout this week, God has been moving amongst us. Right? And again, the theme is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And Christ in you will take you to eternal glory in the name of Jesus. So today, by the grace of God, we're going to be going straight into the word. I'm going to be reading two texts. I'll use the King James Version, okay? King James Version. The first one is our theme. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. From the King James Version. He says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Brethren, this is a rich mystery. There is a lot wrapped up in this mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And then for our second text, I'm reading from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 19 to 21. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 19 to 21. He says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Right. So we thank God for what God has done this week. You know, on Wednesday, we pretty much learned about the Holy Spirit. That was a wonderful message by Brother Tosin. We talked about the Holy Spirit. You know, he said, who is the Holy Spirit? He talked about the workings of the Holy Spirit. And then he ended with our responsibility to the Holy Spirit. What is your own responsibility? So by the grace of God today, we're going to be basically picking up where he left off. We're going to be spending time examining what our responsibilities are. Because there was something he said on Wednesday that really caught my eye. He said that there is no discipleship without discipline. There's literally no discipleship without discipline. And please, I want to say something. If there's any as a member in the lobby or whatever... Please tell them to come into the sanctuary, please. The ushering group, please help us. Tell them to come into the sanctuary, right? There is no discipleship without discipline, right? So today, by God's grace, we're going to be examining one particular discipline that we all need to exercise, right? Because we see from the theme, you know, Christ in you, Christ in you, Christ in you. You cannot be calling yourself a Christian because see, when you say I'm a Christian, you're saying that there is Christ in me. But it's not everyone that means the name of Christ that truly has Christ in them. There are many people that name the name of Christ. We saw from our text. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That instruction will not be coming if there were not people that named the name of Christ. But we're living in iniquity. You see people, they name the name of Christ. Oh, Christ is in me. I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. But they're not practicing any kind of spiritual discipline. They're not practicing any kind of spiritual discipline. So, today by the grace of God, what is the topic we're going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about integrity. Integrity. There are many disciplines you should practice as a person that has Christ in you. But integrity is such a central one to Christ being in us. Because again, I'm telling you this, brethren. There's judgment day. That day will reveal it. The Bible says, the day will reveal it. You can be naming the name of Christ... You may be deceiving people, ah, name in the name of Christ. I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. But if you don't depart from iniquity, one day it will be found out. The Bible says that there is nothing that is hidden that will not be revealed. So today by the grace of God, we're going to be talking about integrity. 
We're going to be talking about integrity. And I'm going to give a definition, you know, to fulfill all righteousness. But I'm really going to spend most of today's meeting giving characteristics of a person of integrity. There are certain topics that are best understood when you use examples. So what is integrity? Integrity is using the Bible as the blueprint of your life. Living out that blueprint and having that be the only version of you that exists at all times and in all places. I'm going to read it again. Integrity is using the Bible as the blueprint of your life. That's number one. Living out that blueprint. That's number two. And having that be the only version of you that exists at all times and in all places. That's what integrity is. It starts with the blueprint of the word of God and then it translates to you living out that blueprint. And then you living out that blueprint is the only version of your life that exists. The Bible says I've been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I so that version that old man is no longer living yet not I but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me there are many people that name the name of Christ and they are living double lives they say oh I have the new man but they are still living like the old man what did that verse say? It says, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. So that old man is dead. That old man is no longer there. But there are people that name the name of Christ. And you can still, they just have that name by tag. But they have that old man by character. You may hide it from man. Or you cannot hide it from God. So what are some characteristics of people that have integrity? Number one. People that have integrity are completely trustworthy. They are what? They are completely trustworthy. Let me ask you this. How many immigrants do you see in very high positions of authority in this land? How many immigrants do you see in high positions of authority in this land? But look at Joseph. Joseph was a man of integrity. He was an immigrant and he was placed wherever he was, he was placed over that thing. In Potiphar's house, he was placed over the household. In the prison, he was placed over all the prisoners. Think about it. At least many of us have watched TV shows. Integrity in little things will lead you to you getting bigger things. In fact, this verse gives us another characteristic of a person of integrity. Those people, they pay attention to the little things. See, brethren, the way you handle the little things says a lot about who you are. The way you handle what? The little things says a lot about who you are. Some people, they only do the right thing when they're on the big stage. But when no one is seeing them, those little things, it doesn't matter to them. No. A person of integrity is faithful in both little things and in big things. What is another characteristic of a person of integrity? They operate in purity. A person of integrity operates in purity scrutinize their lives check it every which way you're not going to find anything look at Daniel the Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 6 that they checked his work and they could not find any error that's a man of integrity look at Samuel before he died he stood before the people of Israel and said check is there anyone I've taken your possessions is there anyone I've cheated is there anyone I've deceived see brethren can you stand before the audience here and say see check my life Check my track record. Do you see anything? Why do you think Jesus was able to say in John chapter 14 verse 30? The prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Nothing. Check my record. I see. Let me open everything. That's my secret place. Let me open it up to all of you. Check. Let's see if the devil will find anything there. That's a person of integrity. A person of integrity does not get close to sin. Or anything that looks like it. A person of integrity, they don't even go near sin. The Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22. It says we should flee from every appearance. It did not even just say, oh, see, uh, uh, free, flee from evil. No, 
even if he looks like evil, the appearance, don't do it. That's one thing I love about Joseph. Joseph, if you read through, I think, Genesis chapter 36, he talks about how Joseph did not even lay with Potiphar's wife. Because many people think, oh, it's just the intercourse. No, 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 no. He did not even lay by her. Because Joseph recognized that one thing leads to another. The Bible says that when lust is finished, it bringeth forth sin. And then sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. It starts somewhere with a seed. Apps, people that are of integrity. You, you don't hear their name near any kind of funny business. You don't. What's another characteristic of a person of integrity? You're going to suffer sometimes for being a person of integrity. Integrity sometimes is associated with shame and suffering. With shame and suffering. Look at David. He was being hunted, hunted, hunted. He had many opportunities to kill the person that was hunting him. But he stuck with his principle. He suffered, but he stuck with those principles. He stuck with those principles. A person of integrity, they don't mind being cheated. As long as they are sticking with the principles of the kingdom. They will rather suffer that cheating and still stick to the principles of the kingdom than get their way and violate God's principles. A person of integrity is a principled person. A person of integrity is a principled person. What is another characteristic of a person of integrity? They always put principle over circumstance. A person of integrity will always put principle over circumstance. Circumstances don't make them start bending their principles. You don't see them, oh, when it's my stuff, they handle it with the utmost care. But when it's other people's stuff, they handle it every which way. No, that's not a person of integrity. Think about it, Joseph was sold into slavery. Some people, they start throwing tantrums when tough situations arise. They start doing what is less than the best because it's not a favorable situation for them. But Potiphar would not have appointed Joseph to be the head of his household if Joseph was not doing an excellent job. People of integrity, principles matter to them more than circumstance. So let me ask you this, brethren. Is the quality of your work situation dependent? When the work you're doing does not have clicks and the camera is flashing, do you do excellent work even in the secret place? That's a person of integrity. Another characteristic of a person of integrity is that they're unchanging. A person of integrity is unchanging. They don't have multiple personality disorder. There are some people, the person you see in church is completely different from the person you see elsewhere. They have one version, version one in church. That's the holy, righteous version. They have version 2 at home. They are monsters. They are lions to their spouses at home. They have version 3 in their place of work. They have version 4 on the road when they are driving. That's not a person of integrity. A person of integrity is one. They are one. Everywhere. The, that, that's why you see that definition I gave. They follow the blueprint of, of the gospel. And that's the one version of them that exists everywhere. Everywhere. Like for example, a person that ministers, a person that is a minister of God, their message should be a natural extension of their lifestyle. Their message should not be different from their lifestyle. But how many people will you find like that? How many people will you find like that? People that lack integrity, they always change. They always change. The situation changes who they are. They're not stable. Joseph's character, he was consistent everywhere. In Potiphar's house, in the prison, even on the throne. His behavior did not change. What is another characteristic of a person of integrity? They don't change when money, sex, or power comes into play. A person of integrity does not change when money, sex, or power comes into play. There are some people when they are living in poverty, they are very humble. 
But when wealth comes, when they get their first job, their behavior completely changes. Their behavior completely changes. You see many people, when money is involved, or sex is involved, or power is involved, they completely change. Oh, well, look at Joseph. Joseph was tempted with sex. He didn't do it. That sex did not make him compromise his principles. But look at Samson. Sex, he compromised his principles. His end was not good. That will never be your portion. In the name of Jesus. What's another characteristic of a person of integrity? They do not cut corners to make lives easy for themselves. If cutting corners means violating God's word. A person of integrity, they don't cut corners. If cutting those corners will make them violate God's word. But you see some people, their principles are very flexible. Their principles are very flexible. When it concerns immigration, they don't mind bending the rules a little bit. Coming to America matters more to you than going to eternity to be with God forever. Brethren, let's tell ourselves the truth. And see, this message is not just for people in the audience. This message is for me as well. People that have integrity, they don't have elastic principles. Their principles are not elastic. Their principles are inelastic. They don't relax their standards in some situations and then uphold them in other situations. No. No. It shouldn't be so. And see, brethren, one of the ways your integrity will be tested is when pressure mounts. When pressure increases, your integrity is going to be tested. But a person of integrity, they don't crack under pressure. An increase in pressure does not lead to a decrease in their integrity. But you see many people, as pressure goes up, their integrity starts dwindling. When tough times come, their integrity starts dwindling. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, oh, we are people of God, we are people of God. But when the fiery furnace faced them, when the temperature was turned up, they did not turn their backs on Christ. Those are people of integrity. If you look at things from the other side, integrity can also be tested by a release of pressure. When life starts getting better, who are you? Are you still the same person even if life gets better? Can we look at the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 10 to 11? Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 10 to 11. It says, when thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he had given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. In the hunger of Nigeria were you one kind of Christian and then in the fatness of America have you changed? Who are you? Who are you? That release of pressure has he changed your lifestyle? And see, brethren, integrity is a continuous discipline. Integrity is a continuous discipline. It's not restricted by time. You're not a person of integrity while you're in church. But then you drop the integrity at the door. You don't take it home with you. No. No. It's a continuous discipline. Integrity should not change because your location has changed. Integrity should be everywhere with you. It should be everywhere with you. Integrity should not change with emotion. Even if you are frustrated, you can keep your integrity in frustration. Integrity is a continuous discipline. And see, brethren, let, let me tell you something. Integrity is extremely rare. Integrity is extremely rare. Can we look at the book of Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6? Proverbs chapter 20. Verse 6. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. He says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Everyone will say, I'm a good person, I'm a good person. But a faithful man who can find integrity is extremely rare. There were about 450 prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel versus one prophet of Elijah. The Bible says that Noah was the only just man on earth. He was a man of integrity. Integrity is extremely rare. 
Another way you can know that a person is a person of integrity is that their words and their actions are congruent. Their words and their actions are congruent. They don't name the name of Christ and live in iniquity. That's not a person of integrity. A person of integrity, what they are preaching, check their lives, they are practicing that thing. See, brethren, see. Let me tell you what the true test of a minister of God is. A minister of God, after they have dropped the mic, after they have dropped the mic and left the stage, what does their behavior look like in the secret place? Your secret place behavior is a true test of who you are as a minister of God. Minister of God does, because there are many ministers of God in quote that are performers on stage. They come to stage to perform. They come to stage to perform. Then what's the difference between you and people that are doing America's Got Talent and whatnot? What you see on stage is not who they are at all. That's not a person of integrity. That's not a person of integrity. And see, let me tell you this, brethren. When a person has true integrity, it affects the environment around them. Many of us know Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine. There's shine and there's shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. See, brethren, if you're operating in iniquity and a true person of integrity is around you, you will not feel comfortable at all. Why do you think the other wise men were jealous of Daniel? He was a person of in true integrity. In fact, let me tell you this, brethren. If unrighteousness is flourishing in a church, check the integrity of the person that is in charge. Integrity cannot flourish. See, unrighteousness cannot flourish where there is true integrity. And see, integrity is a key to revival. When there is integrity, revival breaks out. The apostles, when, you, when, when people saw that, ah, lies are not tolerated here anymore. They say what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. When integrity is the order of the day, when it's the norm, revival will break out. See, brethren, prayer is not the only key to revival. Integrity is the key to revival. In fact, I will argue that integrity is more important than prayer. When there is true integrity, revival will break out. When people are truly doing the will of the Lord, revival will break out. Those things that happened in the Bible, the days of Pentecost, they, they, they are not, you see them, you're like, wow, they're like endangered species in the kingdom of God right now. Because there is no integrity. There is no integrity. And I know some of you may be saying, ah, divine. So does that mean that if a person has integrity, they can't make mistakes? No. Integrity does not mean that you don't make mistakes. Integrity means when you make those mistakes, what do you do about it? Integrity does not mean perfection. Integrity means truthfulness. When you make mistakes, do you air it out? Do you air it out? The Bible says, confess your faults one to another. Apostle Paul, he did not just tell us about the awesome things of his life. He called himself the, himself the chief of sinners. That's a person of integrity. Integrity does not mean that you're always perfect. But it means that you are truthful when you're imperfect. You're truthful. That's integrity. That's integrity. So what do you need to do to operate integrity? First thing, surrender your life to God. There is no magic formula here. Surrender your life to God. And purge yourself. Remember the text we read. If any man will purge himself, cut away those things in your life that do not please God. And then ask the Holy Spirit for help. He will help you. It's not easy to live a life of integrity. But there is grace for it. That's the working of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. When God sees your heart that you are willing, He will help you. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, if you are willing and obedient, you will, you will eat the good of the land. The Bible says that God works in us to will and to do for His good pleasure. So young people, I'm encouraging you today. Build your life on the blueprint of the word of God. That's the only thing I can give you that will sustain you all throughout life. Build your life on the blueprint of the word. There are many other blueprints out there, but it will not take you anywhere. 
is the word of God that will carry you home. Can we please all rise up as we pray? Can we please all rise up as we pray? If you know in your heart that you are not living a life of integrity, begin to talk to God that God have missed it. God, please help me. I don't want to keep living like this. I don't want to keep living a lie. I don't want to have a double life. I don't want to be a hypocrite, Lord. Please help me. Change me, Lord. Purge me of every form of dishonesty and hypocrisy. Let me have a true relationship with you. Come into my life. Take over. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Father, I'm crying out to you today for myself and for every young person in this church. Give us the grace to live for you. Give us the grace to obey your commandments. Give us the grace to be people of integrity. To build our lives on the blueprint of the word. That your name might be glorified, O oh God. Holy Spirit, please help us. And we pray, Lord, that let revival, a revival of holiness and integrity break out in this church. And let it affect the whole world around us. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. We worship and exalt you most high. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. be seated please uh, let's just stretch further our hands to Dr. Divine and pray that as he is poured into us God will continue to pour into him and his cup will never run dry in Jesus name Heavenly Father, King of glory, we come before you today to say thank you. Thank you for the life of your son that you have used to bless your people. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you continue to enrich him. You continue to empower him, Lord, that his life will be a reflection of this message, that his life will be a life of integrity, that because he has set such a great example for these young people, King of glory, you will continue to give him strength. You will continue to give him wisdom. You will continue to bless himself and his family in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can we please rise to our feet as we return our tithes and offerings to the Lord this morning? Uh, we do have various ways to give. We have Zell. You should have an envelope in the front of, in front of you, behind the seats in front of you. Uh, and then we also have Givelify. We have um, our website. If you go to rccgtogp.org slash donate, you should be able to give there as well. Um, and as we give back to God, we're going to have our own, very own Brother Agbemiga usher us <laughs> with the sound of worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, we want to give God back to God. Are you guys ready? And I this kind God, another one you do the ah, hey. Get, get. This kind God, another one do the ah, hey. This kind God, another one you do the ah, hey. Oh yeah. This kind God, another one do the ah, hey. This kind God, yeah. This guy got yeah. I say this guy got yeah. Oh yeah, this guy got yeah. Another one you know it. Another one, another one, another one, another one. Say this guy got yeah. Oh yeah, this guy got yeah. Makes me come into your breath as you say. Oh, yeah. There is something that makes me come into your presence. There is something, there is 
something. There is something. There is something. There is something. There is something. There is something. There is something. There is something. There is something that makes me come into your presence. Oh yeah, quickly look for a neighbor, look for a neighbor, look for a neighbor quickly, look for a neighbor quickly. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh yeah, oh somebody, tell them that you love me. Oh somebody, tell them that you're so blessed. Oh somebody, hey, hey, hey. Oh somebody, tell them that you're so blessed. I still hold oh, somebody, tell them that you love them. Oh somebody, tell them that they're so blessed. Some people are still on the same spot. You need to move forward. Take me higher. Jesus, take me higher, higher, higher. Carry me, carry me, carry me, carry me, carry me, they go, they go, they go. Carry me, carry me, carry me, carry me, carry me, they go, they go, they go. Jesus lift me higher, higher, higher. Lift me higher, Jesus lift me higher, higher, higher. Lift me higher, lift me higher, Jesus lift me higher, higher, higher. Hey, carry me, carry me, carry me, daddy. Carry me, they go, they go, they go. I would follow you, they go. I could they follow you, they go. I could they follow you, they go. Say, yeah, I'm chasing after you. Lord, I am chasing after you. Oh, I could they follow you, they go. I could they follow you, they go. I could they follow, 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 follow. I could they follow you, they go. I go they follow you they go. I go they follow you they go. I go they follow you they go. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, brother Grammy God. Thank you to the Yazim choir. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, King of glory, we thank you for today. We give you glory, we give you praise. Take all the honor, take all the adoration. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be able to return back to you, return to you what is rightfully yours. Father, we say thank you. Father, Lord God, for those children of yours that are unable to give because they don't have enough, because they have insufficient. Father, I ask, Lord God, that you supersize their pockets in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, for those of your children that want to give in the act of service, Lord, we ask. Lord, we ask that you guide them. You provide guidance if they're unsure what it is that they want to do, but they know they want to serve you because that's one way that they can do it even when they don't have funds. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you provide guidance, that you lead them accordingly in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. We thank you for the success of this program. And we ask that as we go on our ways today, Father, you will guide our paths. You will go ahead of us and tackle any obstacles that the enemies have planned for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. In Jesus in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Who has been blessed today? If you've been blessed, tell your neighbor I've been blessed. It's time for our announcements. Um, our word for the month is set your eyes on Jesus. And the anchor scripture is taken from Psalms 34 verse 5. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces will never blush in shame or confusion.
Prudent Women's Week will kick off tomorrow, April 15th. <laughs> Praise God. To Sunday, April 21st. The theme is Arise and Shine. And the anchor scripture is Isaiah 60, verse 1. Please take note of the schedule of the event and plan to attend. On Monday, we'll have our workers' prayer meeting from 5.30 p.m. to 6.00 p.m. on the prayer line. On Tuesday, we'll have Hour of Mercy from 5.00 p.m. to 6.00 p.m. on the prayer line. We all encourage to fast. The prayer line number is 623-232-8069. We know access code. Please get it down on your phones if you don't. On Wednesday, we have Digging Deep Bible Study we hold in church. Our ministry is Digging as Faith at Chempong. The time is 7 p.m. On Friday, um, the women will be having a game night at the Multi-Purpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Come with your game faces. On Saturday, we have bowling. Women will have bowling from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. More details will be shared during the week. Sunday is the grand finale on April 21st during our celebration service. Ministering is Sister Yinka Seriki. And the time is 9 a.m. to 11.40 a.m. These meetings are declared blessed in Jesus' name. Please do well by sharing the flyer and inviting someone you know. Throughout the month of April, Tuesday Hour of Mercy, we'll be praying against the spirit of oppression. As we are persistent in prayers and in fasting, every oppression in our lives will cease forever in Jesus' name. Feel free to share the prayer line number with anyone who will be blessed by it. Good news. The baptism class registration has started. If you desire to be baptized by immersion or would like to know more, please reach out to the church admin, Sister Longe, please. Um, this is also a friendly reminder to register for the membership class. If you've already registered, you should have received a notification. The class is now available. Please see the church admin if you have any questions. Church, please note the RCCG annual convention holds in Dallas, Texas. From the 19th to the 21st of June 2024, save the date as more information will be communicated later. The leaders meeting will be held on Saturday, April 31st at 12 p.m. All leaders are expected to attend. Attention to all prudent women kindly remain in the sanctuary for a brief meeting immediately after today's service. Please let us endeavor to check on ourselves daily. Don't come to church alone on Sunday. Use everything that you must to win souls for Christ. Remember, evangelism is the heartbeat of God. And this is being serious. Evangelism is the heartbeat of God. 2024 is our year of divine repositioning. In Jesus' name, amen. You are unstoppable. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Uh, I, I believe the leaders meeting, I, I don't think April 31st is a real date. And I'm pretty sure that April 30th is a Tuesday. So let's, uh, yeah, we should probably change that. Praise the Lord. But I'm sure Pastor will communicate it to, to all of us. I give a vote of thanks. I want to thank everyone for keeping to time. That's very, very important. So thank you for literally following the schedule to the letter. You know, we had some small hiccups, but God helped us to catch up. Praise the Lord. And I want to appreciate, first, I want to appreciate Pastor and his wife. They have been a huge, huge, huge blessing to Yazim. They have been a huge blessing to Yazim. They always pray for us. They always support us. So we just want to show, show our gratitude. And then I want to thank every member of Yaza. You guys have done an amazing job. Amazing, amazing job this week. This week has been an utmost blessing. So we're very grateful, very grateful to God for that. And then I want to thank the Yazim Choir. Those guys are on a completely different level. How many of us enjoy the praise and worship today? Yeah, that praise and worship was amazing. I mean, I'm telling you, like, some of the best workouts you can get is if you dance during praise and worship. I'm telling you, you may not believe it, but I have, like, a personal randomized control trial that I have experienced myself. I remember, I think there was a day, it was, it was a praise night during the anniversary. I remember checking my weight, I think it was that morning. The praise night was three hours. Although that day, yes, I was fasting. But when I got home, I was, I think, 10 pounds less than when I started that money, right? I'm, I'm telling you. So I'm telling you, it's like a miracle weight loss tool. 
right? In the presence of God, just dance, right? You're losing weight. Your heart rate is going up. And the blood of Jesus is just flushing all those diseases out of you, right? So I'm telling you, like the choir, I'm telling you, the choir, they're a healing tool in the hands of God, right? God's healing works in many different ways. So please, let's give a round of applause for our choir and our band. They did a wonderful, wonderful job. And then I also want to thank the technical group. They've been very big helps to us. You know, broadcasting the services and everything, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. And then I also want to thank every single member of this church. Thank you for being a big support to Yazem. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you for coming to our events and thank you for letting God work through us to impact your life. And then above all, I want to thank God. God is the reason why we are able to achieve any of these things. So I want us to rise up and I want us to give God a thunderous round of applause. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. My soul of help, only you are my help. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for our stone of help. The almighty God, the God of the church. The God that never fell. The God that is the same yesterday. The God that is the same today and forever. Praise the name of the Lord. I'd like to welcome all our first timers to church. If today happens to be your first time. Wherever you are, let's just put our hands together and celebrate them. Praise the name of the Lord. Is anyone coming for the first time today? Oh, you're welcome. God bless you, ma. We're so delighted to have you. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you so much. Uh, this is the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Throne of Grace, where the grace of God is always at work. And like I used to say, you're looking for a place of worship. This is the best place for you to be. And I can assure you that you will never regret it in the name of Jesus Christ. So right after the service, the brother behind Brother Tunde will be meeting with you right after the service to give you one or two information about the church. God bless you. Let's put our hands together. If you are sitting beside her, just give her a warm handshake. Julia, give her a warm handshake. Welcome her to church. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. And then for those of you that are wondering, what is Yazim? So Yazim is the Young Adults and Singles Ministry. Hallelujah. So you've been wondering, Yazim, Yazim, what do they mean by Yazim? So it's the Young Adults and Singles Ministry of our church. So this is where we have people of like mind, the young adults and the singles in the house. They come together to fellowship and to learn the word of God, to grow in the things of God. Not only growing in the things of God, even career-wise and any other thing that can benefit our young adults. And the age range for our young adults and singles in this church is between the ages of 18 to like 30, 35. So if you're not among this department or in this ministry, I want to encourage you to join. I can see that most of the people that, like yesterday program when I came, I saw that mostly they are streams of grace and they're kind of, they want doing almost everything. But I know that we have a whole lot of young adults in this church that need to jump on board and start working for God and start doing something for God. All right. And there's several people that came yesterday too. I saw Tosin. I saw CC. I saw the, the Grand Canyon, the GRA. And so the, and the, many other people came. But I want to encourage those of us that have not plugged in to the young adult and singles ministry of this church. Please do so. And as you do so, God will bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's say a better amen. amen. Also, I want to encourage us, Hour of Mercy on Wednesday, we're praying against the spirit of oppression. And by the grace of God, this Wednesday, we're going to be praying against depression, suicidal thoughts, and anything that is pulling you down, oppressing you from fulfilling destiny. So I want to encourage us, let's come on the prayer line on Tuesday, but I want to encourage you, not only that fast, we're going to be fasting, and then we'll come on the prayer line in the evening, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. to pray together. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, before we close the service, I want to be praying for our young adults. So wherever you are, you fall within that age range. I believe almost all the church, except for our elderly ones. 
Please rise on your feet and let's pray. Shall we stretch forth our hands to these ones and begin to pray for them? That the hand of the Lord will rest upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have learned a lot today. We have learned a lot during this uh, weekend or this week of Yazin program. That God Almighty, the word will work. The grace for them to do the word that the Lord will release unto them. And let's pray for a life of integrity. A life that is pleasing to the Almighty God. That the Lord will release unto them. That this one will be a true representative of Jesus Christ. That nothing will take them away from the love of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will keep them. The Lord will help them. They will excel in life. In the name of Jesus. They will excel in life. They will excel in the things of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father we commit this ones to your hand oh God. We pray that your grace will rest upon them. We pray that your glory will rest upon them. We pray that your beauty will rest upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have learned about integrity today. Lord, we pray, O oh God Almighty, for this once. And even ourselves, Jehovah, the grace to live a life of integrity. The grace to stand for Jesus wherever we find ourselves. The grace never to be shaken. But whatever is going on around us, the grace to focus on the Lord Jesus, Father, release unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for this one, so God, that people will begin to see Christ in them, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That wherever they go, you will make them a true representative of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, bless them, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your mercy rest upon them. Let your favor rest upon them. Let your beauty rest upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for them today, for those of them trusting you for a miracle. Jehovah, we pray that you will visit them in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever may be the reproach in their life, by your mercy today, Lord, take them away in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we rise on our feet? And let's just give thanks to God for the success of today's service. Let's magnify the name of the Lord for helping us. Father, we thank you. And let's commit the new week to the hand of the Lord that the presence of the Lord will go with us. The glory of the Lord will abide with us. The favor of the Lord will rest upon us. The boldness of God to live a life of integrity will be upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. That a new person will imagine us. A new person that will please Christ. A new person that will live for Christ and Christ alone. We, re we receive today, oh God. Lord, we pray that sin will not have dominion over us. We pray that the flesh will not have dominion over us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we, whatever is going on in our land, we are shielded in the name of Jesus Christ. Our children are shielded in the name of Jesus Christ. For those that are traveling this way, we pray for journey mercies. For those that are journey back home, we pray for journey mercies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we hide under the name of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are saved from evil. We are saved from dangers. We are saved from calamities. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your hands. I pray for you today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not lose your job in the name of Jesus. You will not lose your job in the name of Jesus. You will not lose that job in the name of Jesus. For those of you working with your lying senses, your lying senses will not work against you in the name of Jesus. You will not lose that license in the name of Jesus. For those of you that owns your business, your business will flourish in the name of Jesus. Akan will not enter your business in the name of Jesus. Devorah will not enter your business in the name of Jesus. For every marriage in this church trusting God for miracle. May the Almighty God visit you in the name of Jesus. You will not know shame in the name of Jesus. The lifter will lift you up in the name of Jesus. The lifter will lift you up in the name of Jesus. Your pains are over in the name of Jesus. Your struggles are over in the name of Jesus. Your sorrow is gone in the name of Jesus. Whenever I hear from you, it will always be good news in the name of Jesus. 
You will not carry bad news in the name of Jesus. You will not share bad news in the name of Jesus. From me, you will not hear bad news in the name of Jesus. The word says, sounds of rejoicing shall be heard from the tabernacle of the righteous. He said, the hand of the Lord does valiantly. I pray that the hand of the Lord will do valiantly for you in the name of Jesus. Your adversary will not mock you in the name of Jesus. You will rule over them in the name of Jesus. As you set your eyes on Jesus and Jesus alone, may you not know shame in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you to you. Lord, we ask that you continue to take care of your church in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we know that you are coming back again. Whenever the trumpet will sound, the word says, what shall it profit a man? When he gained the whole world and lose his soul. Father, we don't want to lose our souls. We want to reign with you in glory. Father, please help us in the name of Jesus. Hold us by your right hand of righteousness. That we will not fall. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray for every backsliders. That we bring them back home in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance towards you. The Lord give you peace. The Lord send you help from Zion. The Lord perfect all that concerns you. Your children are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not weep over them in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not sorrow over them in the name of Jesus Christ. They will continue to bring you joy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They will bring you joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you are trusting God for concerning those children, may the Lord answer you in the name of Jesus. May your service in the house of the Lord never be in vain. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever amen i am the best i am a hero i am a miracle i am the greatest i am the richest i am settled i have mercy i will enlarge i am free i am divinely repositioned and my life will showcase god's glory you believe that is your portion shout a victorious hallelujah